2022 was a shitty, shitty year. My father passed away. I lost four teeth and needed implants. My only living brother was arrested for dealing drugs. And most of all, my dog died. Losing my best fur pal brisket broke me most of all. I've lost people before, but it didn't disrupt my daily routine like this. All of those thousands of everyday joys were gone. The good morning kisses, his acrobatic peeing on every impossible branch, <laughs> running in the hills with him, tail wagging and tongue out, or just having an excuse to go on a walk for no reason. The silence in my apartment was deafening, and it struggled, really, to finally rise above, above that vast emptiness. I kept dating on and off to fill the void, but I've been single for 10 years at that point. I was going through the emotions just to avoid dick deprivation, <laughs> which left unchecked would consume my every waking thought until I could literally think about nothing else. <laughs> there was a magical line after three dates when something would always go wrong. I'd lose interest. They divulged that their thruple didn't have room for a fourth. <laughs> Start ranting about all the illegals. <laughs> Want to pee on me. Have an apartment full of wigs. Own dogs in dresses. Want to be an actual dog. <laughs> Call me daddy. <laughs> Name drop the real housewives, or worst of all, have a cat. <laughs> On purpose. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm that picky. It was just really hard to find another guy who'd rather be hiking Mount Laguna than day drinking at a gay bar. Mm. I had recently met a self-professed outdoor loving guy in Tijuana that seemed so promising. He looked at me in our first date and said that I make him feel verde all over. The first guy who expressed passion for me in a long time. On the third date, he revealed that he actually had severe seasonal depression and preferred to stay indoors and play video games all weekend. I don't own a television. My last video game system was Nintendo 64, and I can talk to you for hours about the best way to poop in the wilderness. <laughs> it was time to make a change in my life and take a bold step. After losing my dog, I carefully pondered the emotional risk. Was I filling a larger void by buying love through an animal? Was I ready to risk loss like that again? I decided that fostering would be a nice compromise. I could get a dog ready and trained to go to a loving new family, so I put in my application with the Animal Pad Rescue. Also, to take my mind off my latest rejection, I met up with a guy I've been talking to but kind of lukewarm with named James. I'm 10 years older, and off the bat, I explained that I was not looking for a weird daddy thing. <laughs> I had a father, great guy, but replicating that relationship would mean ignoring him for his straight, sports-loving brothers. <laughs> We went out for a drink, which turned into six in Vietnamese food, and you know the rest. <laughs> there were no echoes of virginity lost between us, and having a date instead of just a blow and go felt like a milestone. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We met up again because he was attractive and the sex was good. It was fun, but I didn't see a future. He claimed to love the outdoors, but never attempted a trail in 17 years. Whereas I've gone places by myself, like mildly active volcanoes, where I could have died. <laughs> also, he was deathly, deathly allergic to dogs. Animal Pat followed up with me about a foster that needed a home. I met Kiki. That name would have to go. I'm not walking a dog <laughs> named Kiki through Hillcrest like a basic gay. <laughs> 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 I watched her leap around from myself to the two trainers rolling on her back while aggressively kissing and growling, and she was personable, and I knew I could work with her. I could get this super needy dog trained and ready to go to a permanent family. 
I brought Kiki home, and she would lay on her back and wiggle and growl and race back and forth through the apartment, and I called her, damn, I needed a name fast. I hate people who give their dogs human names. Here you go, Justin. Come on, Eileen. <laughs> I love dogs with food names, but my last dog was Brisket. So I looked at this dog, and I said, you're ridiculous. You're silly. I'm going to call you silly. And she peed in my living room in agreement. <laughs> I never wanted a dog that was a kisser, but all this wanted to do was lick your face until the end of time. I didn't know if I could deal with this. She would stand on your chest and put her paw on your neck and demand, give me kisses. <laughs> and I started to work with her by holding her mouth closed and saying, enough, God damn it, my face is drenched. <laughs> Meanwhile, I felt like James was more into me than I was into him, and the age gap was daunting. His apartment looked like it came out of a design catalog, but it was filled with skateboards, college drinking banners, a shot ski, beer funnels, a beer pong table, and other props I'd expect in a dorm room, not a 37-year-old teacher's apartment. It was weird. <laughs> My apartment, by contrast, was chaotic and, mess chaotic and messy, but it was personal. Every painting or item I had had a meaning or a story behind it. I texted James that I needed friends more than lovers, and that's where it was going. He agreed, although later on I realized that the only possible answer is to agree. <laughs> I kept sending James pictures of the dog and asked him to hang out. I shared the dog at the fence with a caption asking for the secret password. After a few days, he confided that he saw potential in me and was disappointed at being friend-zoned. So I invited him over to meet the dog. We hooked up, and of course, and he left later with his eyes half swollen and sneezing. <laughs> Text me <laughs> later. Are you keeping the dog? <laughs> <laughs> James and I kept cautiously hanging out. He lived three blocks away, and it was too easy to meet up. I walked by his apartment several times a day with the dog. When we passed his building, Silly would pull me to the entrance, tail wagging, and stare into the lobby, waiting for him to come out. James began taking allergy meds and staying over. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure where this was going. <laughs> On paper, there were problems. I love hiking, backpacking, and adventure travel. James hasn't done any of those things on his own, but he was open for anything. It was refreshing to have someone who always wanted to do my things with wide-eyed enthusiasm, and he didn't force me to hang out with his friends. <laughs> he joined my running group, and I made him buy trail shoes with tread instead of old worn vans. The first time he fell, he asked me if his bone was sticking out, and I told him that he literally just skinned his knee. <laughs> While the dog comforted him by licking his face off. <laughs> Eventually, we s he stopped falling, and I started showing him all the trail systems. We moved on to backpacking and desert camping. Before I knew it, James was staying over every night, and between him and the dog, my life felt almost full. But I still hung on to the idea that both of these creatures in my life were fosters. It didn't feel permanent that I could have a boyfriend for the first time in a decade, and I had deep reservations about investing emotionally in a dog again. I never wanted a dog this needy, and I thought that Silly should have a family who could give her all the attention. I kept her on the website and made her an Adopt Me banner to wear on walks. No one expressed interest because she was a pity mix, and there's so many of them out there. I was waiting for the other shoe to drop with James, too. James didn't seem to get my lifelong obsession with dogs or understand them. He would ask me why the dog sniffed everything. Why did she make snorting noises? Why was she always licking us? Because, because dogs are dogs. <laughs> the first time he walked silly, he held the leash straight up in the air like she was a yo-yo. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I had her walking off leash, and I wondered how much potential I could have with someone who was both allergic and ignorant of dogs. Maybe I was looking for problems. I kept trying to push him away, and on some level, I didn't think I was worthy of this much interest. But James just stubbornly accepted me and wanted me for who I was. He was the first guy who didn't make me feel like I had to change, and he refused to let me go. 
look, I know I have big flaws. I'm messy and I rarely sit still. I hate small talk and I'm either hyper-focused or trying to do 12 things at once. My car is a mess. None of my furniture matches. My clothing style is comfort over flattering. And I feel guilty when I bring guys over to my apartment, which resembles some sort of dystopian version of Pottery Barn. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. James, meanwhile, is a clean freak, and I confess that I couldn't recall the last time I mopped or cleaned my shower. And instead of running away, he patiently listened to my never-ending gripes about my Jewish mother and took joy in cleaning the apartment, which was quickly becoming ours. We also have communication issues. I was, it was exhausting to always have to be sarcastic and have to constantly explain to him that I was being sarcastic. Mm -hmm. I had to challenge him to read past the headlines so we could have better conversations about the news. When he used the phrase both sides when discussing Trump, I would lose it. But our conversations gradually got better. I was still going through the motions of pretending like this dog wasn't going to stay. But when somebody finally asked if she was up for adoption, James and I both snapped back, no! <laughs> The three of us started going to Fiesta Island daily to let Silly run with dog friends. One afternoon, we walked by a distracted owner with multiple dogs, and one of them aggressively bit into Silly and refused to let go. I was yelling, Silly was crying, and I felt frozen watching this dog that I was responsible for, that I was fostering, just being hurt. Meanwhile, James suddenly leapt into full mama bear mode and started wailing on this other dog with his fist until it finally let go. I was still in shock, but at that moment, I felt the profound love that I had for both of them. James sat with her in the back seat, telling her it would be okay and stroking her head as we raced to the vet. I accepted that they had both become the family I needed, and there was nothing temporary about any of this. I had adopted them, and they had adopted me. Give it up for Leo Deckelbaum.